Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So uh, just a couple of topics, one Linux related and one Mac related that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, first is, I think, and uh, I'm saying I think because I can only go by my limited testing. So don't take this as gospel, but I think Fedora is ready for full-time Wayland. Yep, you heard it here. You heard it first. Basically, all the testing that I've done and all the requirements that I needed for Wayland to be working correctly are now fully functional in Fedora 25. So there was the last problem I was having with uh, VocoScreen. And basically what was happening is if I recorded with VocoScreen in Fedora 25 running Wayland uh, and running the GNOME desktop, basically what would happen is... I would record it and I would get audio and, and you would see the mouse move but there would be nothing but a black screen being recorded. So that problem is now gone. When I go into Gnome Whalen, it records perfectly fine except for one little problem that is not Wayland related and I'll explain that. Uh, if I run VocoScreen, whether I'm in Wayland or Xorg, now that VocoScreen has updated to 2.5.0, the problem that I'm seeing when I'm in my uh, GNOME desktop is um, massive amounts of drop frames on the video and even cuts in the audio, so it's dropping frames in the audio as well. So I've done a couple of experiments. Um, I've tried it uh, in Wayland and I've tried it in Xorg, that is VocoScreen, and no matter what, it doesn't work. now. Uh, VocoScreen has recently been updated to 2.5.0 and prior to that update it was working fine. So I'm really hoping that uh, VocoScreen will have a update coming out soon to fix the problem. So a lot of you viewers say, Mark, why aren't you running OBS? And I, I do want to run OBS on Fedora, but just an FYI, it actually is only compiled and set up for Ubuntu, Windows, and OS X. And of course, Windows was the original. So uh, what are the issues then? Well, and I have done this before, but I would have to download the source code and compile the source code from scratch, which uh, can be quite a booger. Um, so I really don't relish the idea of installing OBS from the source code. So I'm really hoping at some point uh, one of the Fedora repositories, maybe RPM Fusion, will pick it up and compile a version for Fedora. And that would be really cool, but so far, no. So I don't do OBS, and that's why. And I, honestly, for what I'm doing, I really think OBS is a heavy hitter. I just need a halfway decent tool to be able to record what I'm doing. Just before I tried to record using VocoScreen in GNOME was a... Uh, pretty big update of 685 megabytes for Fedora 25 and prior to that update of course uh, VocoScreen and GNOME wasn't working after the update still wasn't working oddly enough if I switch over to KDE Plasma it works fine and that reminds me of a humorous comment one of the viewers made they said uh, oh great here's a guy talking about uh, you know, Mac OS while he's running Vista. <laughs> so I guess in some ways it is kind of Vista-like. Um, but you know what? I kind of like the eye candy in Vista. I thought it was really attractive and actually visually easier for me to see the flattening of all the elements up here in modern operating systems. You know, when you have two applications layered over each other, uh, maybe it's because I'm getting older and visually it's harder for me to see, but it was really nice when the foreground application was a darker gray and the background application was a lighter gray, you know, so you could tell them apart one had um, multiple dimensions and so on. So to me, it was a lot easier and I liked it a lot better. But, you know, uh, everybody has their flavors. So. Anyway, KDE seems to be working fine. I might try another desktop like XFCE or something like that and just see how applications are behaving, see how VocoScreen does with recording and stability, see if I'm missing any frames. So, in other news, uh, I thought this was quite humorous. Um, 
9 to 5 Mac really paints this uh, pleasingly, but Apple removed the time remaining feature in their battery life estimates following MacBook Pro complaints about battery life. So I, I you know, I'm trying not to laugh, okay, but um, listen to what 9 to 5 Mac has to say about this issue. Uh, following a flurry of media coverage highlighting battery life complaints for Apple's 2016 MacBook Pros, we've learned an internal investigation by the company has determined there isn't a hardware flaw to address with the new machines. Instead, Apple is removing inaccurate time remaining battery life estimates for Mac OS, a move that it hopes will address concern among users. I'm, I'm so confused. Hi Apple, I bought a new MacBook Pro 2016. The battery life is actually shorter than what you advertise and it's shorter than the previous generation MacBook Pro. What do you think about that, Apple? Well, in order to fix that, says Apple, what we're going to do is remove the time remaining on the battery because it's inaccurate. Okay, isn't the fact that battery life is not very good on the new MacBook Pros compared to the older MacBook Pros something of concern? There's so many different elements we got to discuss with this. First of all, it's not uncommon for a manufacturer of ultra portables or laptops to reduce the battery size given whatever processor is being used, power usage over time. So uh, it's it's completely conceivable. We could have a smaller battery and still get a longer period of time running off the battery. So I could see that. And I think with Apple, you know, they said, well, we're, we're concerned about weight. That's one of the issues. Uh, we're using a Skylake processor, so we're thinking battery life should be fine so we can reduce weight, make the MacBook thinner. <coughs> Uh, you probably watched my previous video where I talked about making the MacBook thinner. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, we can make it thinner. We can make it lighter, and uh, we can go ahead and make the battery smaller because with the Skylake processor, we're actually going to consume less power when we're running on the battery. So maybe it didn't work out perfectly. Um, if I was Apple, and I'm not, uh, you know, I would have said, you know, the battery life is the battery life and uh, we just feel that you're gonna get a varying amount of time remaining depending on how you utilize the system now if there was really a problem with the battery life estimations and the calculations I could see removing that but honestly no operating system is perfect um, Let's see what I've got. So I'm in charging mode right now, and it tells me I am 88% charged. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug. And I'm in Linux, of course. And we'll just go ahead and minimize. Don't mind the SE Linux denial. Of course, I'm running in permissive mode. And I know what some of you will say. That's terrible. Well, maybe it is. Uh, anyway, so it's telling me... I've got two hours 50 minutes remaining. Now, if 10 minutes from now I brighten the screen to full brightness and the time remaining changes, is it okay to assume that how I use the computer will reflect that? Or is it also okay to assume that, you know, it may not update immediately? So it may still say two hours and 50 minutes and I've changed how I'm using the computer, so I'm actually consuming more battery. Yes, absolutely. I think most of us know to take that with a grain of salt, that time measurement. It's like, you know, we don't really know for sure. We're thinking we're going to get 2 hours and 50 minutes, but we don't know. And I notice it says discharging 88%, but when I hover the mouse over battery, it's now showing me that my capacity is down to 86%. So here in KDE, you know, it's not quite... Um, reflecting in this part of the display the actual current battery life so 
I don't see it as a really big issue. Um, I feel like the people that were complaining and questioning the battery life weren't saying that um, the battery life estimate was wrong. They were saying the overall time is wrong, and that's easy to determine. Uh, do your average usage and time it and see how much usage you get. And probably much to Apple's chagrin, if you have an older version of the MacBook Pro 2015, 2014, whatever, and you use the same applications on that particular MacBook Pro and you get more battery life, I think it's crystal clear that we have a design issue and not an application issue with estimating battery life. So that's the bottom line. I, I just think it was kind of a silly way to deal with it. Um, and I feel like Apple probably could have been a little bit more straightforward uh, with their users. I really feel like what they're trying to do here is sweep this under the rug so that users aren't reminded of what kind of battery life they should be getting. So it makes sense. Now, whoops, I hate it when I move to another desktop. Hello, I'm back again. So, you know, for me, you know, I'm in Linux. My battery life is dismal, isn't it? I mean, it was telling me two and a half hours, and I'm on what? A battery that should last four to five hours minimum, the uh, Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro. So, um, that's not the greatest battery life, but on the other hand, I am recording video right now, so the computer's pretty busy. Um, usually on battery life with Linux, I get about four hours. Uh, so I don't pay too much mind to what it tells me here. I know it's just an estimate based on my current use. Curious about what you think. Um, what would I do if I was Apple at this point? Uh, you made your decision. Stick with it don't talk about it anymore maybe getting rid of the estimate will uh, eventually calm things down but I think what we're looking at is a MacBook Pro that just doesn't run quite as long not the greatest sin I mean you got some trade-offs anyway you know the system is lighter it's thinner uh, what other trade-offs did you get that were good I really can't think of any so if the battery life is shorter and you paid more for the system than you do the 2015 model. Well, there we go. It's it's thinner and lighter. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. Hope you have a great day. And if I don't see you again, a great holiday coming up.